Sorry to those who tried to turn in live that I am a few minutes late. I don't really have a good excuse. It's quarantine. What else do I have to do? But I am here now, so we'll do our best. Um, once again, just these Tuesday devotionals are just kind of little touch-ins to just kind of reflect on things we can pull out of scripture, what's going on in life, and uh, as I talked about, I believe last Thursday, if you were in on the Zoom call, we talked about how the next few weeks we're just going to kind of work our way through Corinthians as we had spent a couple of weeks kind of focusing on uh, what's going on with coronavirus and how we adapt to that and we shouldn't ignore that or say we're done with that because it's still going on and it's still impacting what we do and how we live but we also need to continually be rooted uh, in God's word and so we want to just keep making progress with that and so that's what we're going to do for a few weeks and for those of you who see this the next zoom call we'll have will just kind of be a relational time we'll play some games and just hang out a little bit and so this is going to be our teaching time for the week. And for that, we're going to look at Corinthians 2, 1 through 15. And as we make our way through Corinthians, this isn't a deep, deep, deep word by word, verse by verse study. This is kind of uh, just things to hit on and touch on as we move through it. And so a really cool thing you could do would be to uh, read through this on your own. Uh, focus on the chapters and, and kind of do that deep dive yourself or with your family as we kind of touch on some different things in these devotionals. Um, so today we're going to look at uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 15. And there it might be a little bit of a longer passage for a devotional maybe, but there's a lot of great things in here. And so starting in verse 1, uh, chapter 2, And I, when I came to you brothers, did not Come proclaiming to you the testimony of God with lofty speech or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my message were not plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest on the wisdom of men but in the power of God. Yet, among the mature, we do impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers understand this age. Uh, none of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear, has, or ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except the Spirit of that person, which is in him? So also, no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And we impart this in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the Spirit, interpreting spiritual truths to those who are spiritual. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him, and he is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual person judges all things, but is himself to be judged by no one. For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So, again, a lot of things just to kind of quickly touch on for a devotional, uh, but also some really important principles we can get. Um, it would be helpful to remember what Paul is writing to. The Church of Corinth is dealing with a lot of internal division within the church. And he writes this letter to address those things, to teach them and instruct them on what they should be doing and, and how they should be doing things. 
But it's interesting that one of the earliest chapters and pieces of this letter focuses on how Paul clarifies where his wisdom comes from. That his speaking ability and his uh, wisdom is not the foundation of his message or his ability to share the gospel. Paul emphasizes that he relies on the power of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's where his wisdom comes from. That's where the effectiveness of his message comes from. That's where the power of the gospel comes from. Not on people's ability to uh, speak intelligently or have great arguments, but simply on the power uh, of God and the work of the Holy Spirit. And where I think I see this pop up is how, as humans, we can allow worldly things to kind of permeate or work its way into our faith and our, our way of Christian living. In my undergrad, I went to Kuiper, and now I'm at seminary. It was easy to see yourself and others become almost idolatrous in the way they pursued knowledge. And so people would kind of cling to theologians and these books, and they held them almost to the same level as the gospel, as the Bible. Uh, they would spend so much time focused on, like, focusing on building up knowledge for themselves and just knowing things about the Bible and about God that they would puff themselves up with an ego just because of knowledge. And it's really good and helpful for these people, but also everyone to understand Paul, who has as much reason to brag about knowledge as anybody, doesn't take that route. He doesn't puff himself up based on knowledge. In another uh, piece of his writings, he talked about how he counts all his kind of achievements as loss because they're, they're meaningless almost in the kingdom of God. And so what he focuses on is the idea that he knows nothing except Christ crucified that that is the power of his message, that is the unifying call for Christians. In verse 11, starting in verse 11, it says, So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given us by God. And I really like this verse because it kind of frames where our growth as Christians come from. We come to know God and understand the gospel deeply through the wisdom and work of the Holy Spirit, not through human understanding. And so my question, I guess question of the day, would be, do I depend on the Holy Spirit for understanding? And that might be a question we've had before. Um, do we trust in the Holy Spirit? Do we trust in God? Do we listen to God and the Holy Spirit? And that's a good question to reflect on. But I also then wonder, if do we ever talk about, well, how do, how do we actually do that? Because uh, it's a good thing to ask, but if we don't know really how to do that, it becomes much less effective. And so when I think about what does it mean to rely on the Holy Spirit... Well, a big piece of that for me and my faith is prayerful listening. When I am encountering something that I need to work through, whether it's a problem or a challenge, or I'm just trying to understand something better, do I scour my books and resources and talk to all the smart people I know and see what they have to say? Or do I first start with a time of prayerful listening to see what God has to say to me, to see the way the Holy Spirit might be working in my heart. And in reality, I should consult my resources. I should consult people who are smart and that could share good insight with me. But ultimately, my wisdom does not come from those things. It comes from the work of the Holy Spirit. And so we should use these resources, but when we encounter these problems, do we take a time of prayerful listening to just ask God to speak to us, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal something to us. Uh, one example I think of is um, if I am in an argument with my wife, and it can be very easy for me to focus on how I'm right, 
uh, and I try and focus on those arguments and the reasons why I should have won said argument or something like that. But it becomes a lot more fruitful for me to take the time and think through, well, God, did I act in a way that was ungracious or unloving? Do, do I really need to be right? Do I take the time to kind of examine, is the way I am as a person compatible with what God has called me to be? And do I allow myself to maybe face the ways that I'm not? And so as you go into your week, I hope we can kind of think through this idea of what does it mean to listen to the Holy Spirit uh, in your prayer life as you maybe are praying for health for people or for things to get back to normal and for all of these things. Take some time to think and reflect and listen and ask God if there's anything he has to lay on your heart at this time. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, this will be a YouTube video later.